While German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is traveling to China with a business delegation, the British government is relying on demarcation and even military deterrence. The mistake that the West allowed in the case of Russia should not be repeated. Real politics instead of moral politics. That's what CSU leader Markus Söder means by a statement that was impressively observed during his visit to China at the end of March. Sitting relaxed in a teak armchair, the Bavarian politician discussed bilateral relations between Munich and Beijing with Chinese Prime Minister Li Qiang. Where others withdraw, we intensify international contacts, he later explained. We represent Bavaria's interest abroad and provide support for the economy. The Prime Minister had few words left for criticism of the authoritarian state at that point. While a top German politician is making overtures to China and the de-risking strategy towards the People's Republic is progressing rather slowly, Politicians from another European country are taking a hard line against Beijing. At around the same time as Söder's visit to Beijing, the British government imposed sanctions on two Chinese citizens and a state-affiliated company. The move was in response to cyber attacks on British parliamentarians and the Electoral Commission in 2021 and 2022 that gave China access to personal data of millions of British voters. The attacks had been reported in the past, I talked about them too, but the full extent was only recently revealed. And the British are also showing the People's Republics their limits militarily. Last Sunday it became known that the Pacific Defense Alliance AUKUS, founded by the USA, Great Britain and Australia, may soon be expanded to include Japan and the Philippines. The two countries have been at loggerheads with Beijing for years over territorial disputes. The alliance was founded in 2021 to curb China's expansion efforts in the South China Sea. The relationship between London and Beijing has therefore reached a new low. Like all democratic states, Great Britain faces the challenge of finding a tone towards the People's Republic that is both politically acceptable and compatible with its own economic and geopolitical interests. The Asian superpower is an important supplier of raw materials for the West. At the same time, the country stands for human rights violations like few others and openly threatens to invade the island nation of Taiwan. A scenario that worries Western states, especially with regard to the Russian war of aggression. The relationship with China has been intensively discussed since then. Political observers accuse the West of having been too lenient towards Russia for a long time, thereby giving Vladimir Putin free reign for his imperialist plans, which he ultimately put into practice in Ukraine. Western countries absolutely want to avoid a repeat of this mistake in the case of China, but how seriously this is actually pursued varies greatly. The People's Republic was Germany's most important trading partner in 2023, and according to the Federal Statistical Office, the foreign trade volume last year was 253.1 billion euros. For comparison, the trade in goods between China and Great Britain amounted to around 117.8 billion euros. The German goal of minimizing economic dependence, or the so-called de-risking, is making only slow progress. German-Chinese trade has fallen by 15% compared to the previous year. However, according to the German Economic Institute, imports of industrially relevant goods such as machinery and chemical raw materials into Germany remain high. And at the weekend, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz traveled to China with a delegation of leading representatives of German industry. The urgency of a change of course, however, has been recognized primarily in Great Britain. Relations with China are considered to have cooled down, and the last visit by a British head of government to mainland China was six years ago. The two world powers were once, once much closer. In 2015, the then Prime Minister David Cameron proclaimed a golden age of British-Chinese relations and was photographed drinking beer with China's head of state Xi Jinping. Two years ago, incumbent Prime Minister Rishi Sunak declared this era over. 
China is increasingly perceived by government officials as a threat to internal security, according to a government strategy paper from last year. The People's Republic is an epochal and systemic challenge that impacts almost all areas of government policy and the daily lives of the British people, as they said. In fact, cases of hacker and espionage attacks on British civil servants and government institutions have increased. The cyber attack on the Electoral Commission, which the BBC described as one of the largest in British history, was followed by further attempts by the People's Republic to influence political events in London. Last year, the British domestic intelligence agency MI5 was forced to warn MPs about a suspected Chinese agent who worked as a lawyer in Britain and had close contacts with politicians. In another case, a parliamentary staffer was arrested for allegedly spying for China. And due to such incidents, the British government is increasingly relying on defensive measures and is thus taking a pioneering role in Europe. In 2021, Great Britain became the first country on the continent to ban the Chinese technology group Huawei from building 5G infrastructure. London later joined a handful of European countries in banning the Chinese social media platform TikTok from its employees' work cell phones or mobile phones wherever you live. The government had previously passed a law that allows it to block or impose conditions on business relationships with foreign actors if they are deemed to pose a threat to national security. And two years ago, London used this power more frequently on no deal than on those involving Chinese involvement, according to a BBC report. Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden explained this by saying that China is not only a very large global investor, but also the biggest state threat to economic security. Mainly because of the conservative China hawks in its own conservative party, the British government is increasingly turning from a friend to a skeptic of the People's Republic. The most prominent China critic is probably the former head of government Liz Truss. During her sh sh very short term in office in 2022, she campaigned alongside a number of conservative MPs to officially classify China as a threat. Yeah, but she's always exaggerating. This would allow for stricter monitoring of Chinese activities in the UK. This demand has also become loud again in the wake of the recently announced cyber attacks. Sunak has so far rejected the step, but the vehement criticism from China hawks is putting the prime minister under pressure. And another demand, namely to exercise restraint when concluding new or resuming idle economic contracts, is at least in line with the current government action. Although there have been reports of trade negotiations between Beijing and London in recent months, no significant agreement has yet been reached. According to the think tank UK in a changing Europe, it could stay that way. One report says... Expanding trade relations is politically unlikely, particularly as overdependence on China is viewed as a potential risk to national security. On the other hand, economic cooperation is increasing on other fronts. According to government figures, British exports to Taiwan rose by 18.2% between 21 and 22. To Beijing's anger, Taiwan and Great Britain also signed an agreement on bilateral trade talks in November according to The Guardian. Even if the measures don't go far enough for the China hawks, they were certainly enough to anger China. The Chinese embassy in London said the accusation of cyber attacks was baseless and that the sanctions announcement was pure political manipulation and malicious slander. In view of these sharp tones, there will probably not be any photos of British and Chinese heads of governments together in comfortable armchairs anytime soon. And if you want to know more, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.